Welcome to the CTS Learning Series, Chapter 4, Data Model Conformance Verification, Video 4, Verification of the USM Using the CTS via Command Line. In this video, we will understand how to use the command line to test data models, understand where the DMVT and DIG are located, and understand the proper syntax for testing a USM via the command line. The DMVT and DIG, or Data Model Validation Tool and Data Model to IDL Generator, is an integral part of the conformance test suite used to test if the data model is conformant to the FACE technical standard and convert the data model to IDL. For how the DMVT and DIG are used, please refer to Chapter 1, Video 1, and Chapter 4, Video 2. It should be noted that the DIG was not used in Chapter 4, Video 3, as we ran the data model conformance tests only. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use the DIG. The DMVT is written in Java, and Java is required to invoke the DMVT from the command line. For installation and environment setup directions for Java, please refer to Chapter 2. To invoke the DMVT, open a command prompt to the installation directory of the CTS. Then, change the directory to the folder called DMVT. Finally, invoke the DMVT by executing the shown command. Let's demonstrate this by using the data model we already know will pass conformance, as tested by the CTS GUI in Chapter 4, Video 3. Let's set our USM to the location of the USM that we are going to test, the SDM to the location of the SDM that we are going to test, and the log file to home CTS user DMVT underscore out. Txt. After pressing enter, we can see the DMVT runs a series of tests on the USM. If we open home CTS user DMVT out.txt, we can see each test with the results directly underneath the test title. Let's try using the DMVT with an expected error. We use the same USM that we wrote with the syntax error we used in chapter 4, video 3 as well. We use the same command we used for the successful data model, except we'll replace the successful USM with the failing USM. If we press enter, we'll see the DMVT starts to test the USM, but returns with an error. If we open DMVT underscore out dot txt, we'll see that the model is not well formed, and thus the DMVT did not complete the required testing. For the complete options on running the DMVT, it is recommended to look at the help menu by executing java-jar daconformancetest.jar-h. If we look closely, we have options for entity uniqueness, if the data modeler decided to create all entities as unique, observable uniqueness, if the data modeler decided to create all observables as unique, an option to specify the port, which allows the user to specify where the results will return to after the DMVT is finished conformance checking, and a unit of portability option, which echoes the units of portability in a given data model via a specified port. The port and UOP options are used exclusively by the CTS GUI to display necessary information about the data model. Out of these options, the only required flags are USM, SDM, and L. All other options are not necessary to test the USM for conformance on the command line. After the DMVT is run, the CTS's normal operating procedure is to convert the USM's views into IDL. This is done by the DIG. To invoke the DIG, open a command prompt at the installation of the CTS. Then, Change the directory to the folder called USM IDL Gen. Finally, invoke the dig by entering the shown command. We are going to demonstrate using the dig on the data model we already know will pass conformance, as tested by the CTS GUI in Chapter 4, Video 3. Let's set our output directory to home CTS user dig output directory. 
our UOP name to ATC underscore manager, our USM directory to the location that our USM is located in, and the view to ATC underscore data. We know that ATC underscore data is a platform view, which we can see in the USM here. By pressing enter, we invoke the dig to convert the data model to IDL. We can see the results of this process by going to the dig output directory location that we specified. The dig creates a folder called face, subfolder called dm, and two further subfolders called balsa and balsa underscore types. These names reflect what the names of the data models and UOP models are in the supplied USM. Let's first look at the balsa folder. As we can see, the USM's data models platform types have been converted into IDL. If we go into the balsa underscore types folder, we can see the UOP models views were converted into IDL. Thank you for watching. This concludes chapter four, video four, verification of a USM using the command line, which completes chapter four. In the next chapter, entitled Testing a Non-OSS UOC Example, we will demonstrate how to configure the project and toolchain configuration file and show how to test each face segment type.